how do Europe and the United States compare? Super excited to get into this one and check out the comparison between Europe and United States. But before we do get into this, I appreciate you guys clicking that subscribe button. Let's get straight into this and check this out. Europe. One continent, 44 countries, okay. according to the UN, and 746 million people. Oh, the United wow. States are part of North America, only one country with 329 million people, less than half of Europe. The bro, do you know what's crazy? That America is probably the same size or bigger <laughs> than Europe, bro. United States are often compared to the European Union right. or Europe as a whole a lot of times. So Man. in this video, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at a few indicators and check how it is that they in fact compare. Okay. We've already covered a few of the basics, amount of countries and population, but what about size? The United States have an area of around 9.8 million square kilometers. Wow. Europe has a size of around 10.5 million. Also Bro, how close that is? I don't think people realize how big America is, bro. Yo! So this can vary depending on which limits you attribute to the continent. So right. now that we've covered all of those basics, let's jump into a few specific indicators and find out how the two compare. First, okay. comparing the latitude. It's very interesting to see the overlay of the European cities on top of the US territory and vice versa. For instance, as stupid as it may sound, I had no idea Reykjavik was as further north as northern Canada. Huh? The same applies to Oslo. It makes sense that Portuguese... Oh, wait, so is this like if you put every single country in Europe in America? <laughs> is this the way it would be? Yo, that's mud. And Spanish cities are on the same level as California, at least climate wise. But it's weird. For okay. instance, that Ankara is at the same level as Delaware. For some reason, I always thought it was so much further south. It's also strange to see that Los Angeles is on the same latitude as Algeria in North Africa, or that New York is at the same latitude as Azerbaijan. Speaking of Portugal, Spain, and Yo, California, that is so trippy looking at it like this, bro. That is actually so trippy. Bro, this just shows how big America is. <laughs> With that New York is at the same latitude as Azerbaijan. Okay. Speaking of Portugal, Spain, and California, how do the US and Europe compare when it comes to the hours of sunlight they get every year? Through this map, we understand that the Southwest USA gets more hours of sun than anywhere in right. Europe over 3,500 a year. And unlike Europe, there's nowhere in the US that gets less than 1,800 hours of sun. And Yo, look at the UK, bro. Look at the UK, bro. Yo, can't we just get a little bit more sunlight, man? Can't we just, like, you know, can, can we not just be grumpy and moody weather all the time? This is the case in many areas of Europe, those in light green, blue, and dark blue. It's also odd, at least wow. to me who isn't an expert on this matter, how the amount of hours of sun isn't directly related to the latitude of the region. I always assume that okay. the closer to the equator you are, the more hours of sun you get, but we can see on this map that this isn't the case at all, even though we can tell that usually southern areas get more sun. If you know which other factors determine hours of sun... Wait, yeah, that is weird, actually. That, like, look at this place. Right? This is Norway, right? Norway is so much higher than us, but they get more sun? And then Sweden surrounding them gets less sun? Why? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Another interesting topic is human development. The United States and Europe are arguably two of the most developed areas of the world. This right. map compares the human development index of each US state and each European country. In case oh, okay. you don't know, the HDI is calculated as the geometric mean of life expectancy, education, and gross national income per capita. Assuming that those indicators are representative of the quality of life of people, it seeks to measure precisely that. In the United States, there's only one state state that doesn't make it into the top three HDI categories. Oh, wow. Mississippi. When we look at Europe, only a Yo, what's going on with Mississippi, man? Yo, anyone watching this from Mississippi? What's going on here? Full of countries are in the top ranking. Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Ireland, Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, and Switzerland. And when you look at Eastern Europe, these levels go significantly down. With wait, wait, wait. You're telling me the UK is not in the top... Bro, what? But Ireland is? Many countries in the lowest category, such as Ukraine, Turkey, Serbia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Albania, and North Macedonia. Right. In Western Europe, Portugal is the only country who isn't in the top three levels of HDI. A okay. somewhat subjective comparison of these two areas is also depicted in this other map. This is based in a 2014 
Pew Research Center poll. It's almost 10 years old, so the data might be somewhat outdated and no longer oh, valid. Wow. Always keep that in mind for these types of videos where data and maps are presented. The data might not be 100% right and it might be outdated. Wait, 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 wait. Percentage of the population absolutely certain God exists? Bro, Europe, like, yo, we're just not believing in God? At all? Bro, 70 to 82% in the South of America. 50 to 69 percent the rest bro what but in this one people were asked if they are absolutely certain of god's existence wow the comparison of the results between the us and europe is astonishing mm. the majority of us states have over 50 percent of people being certain of god's existence some even surpassing 70 percent those in dark blue only vermont maine and massachusetts have results under 50 percent bro the difference in this is crazy between europe and america on this matter while most of europe is much less certain in their belief of god wow most of the continent is in yellow with only 10 to 29 percent being certain of their belief portugal poland slovakia lithuania and ukraine along with bulgaria yo i actually can't believe how low that stat is 10 to 29 percent that stat's extremely low. Go up to 30 or 49 percent, but still not reaching over half of the population. The rest of the Balkans is more religious, but it's only right. Georgia and Armenia who reach the dark blue level. Okay. There's a few countries missing from this map, those in gray. If you have any idea of how religious they are, leave a comment below. Another interesting, interesting thing we can compare are age restrictions in the US and Europe. Age restrictions can be applied to driving, voting, tobacco, or alcohol purchases. Make wait, wait, this will be interesting actually. Unsupervised car driving age 18, 17 UK, 16 in America, 14. Wow. Voting age, pretty much everyone's 18. Tobacco age, 21 for a whole America, 18. Minimum alcohol purchase age, 21 for America. 18 pretty much oh wow many of these change often so be aware these might not be correct at the moment you watch when it comes to driving the u.s government allows people to drive at a much younger age and yo there's gonna be so many kids driving in america bro but then again that makes sense because i all the movies and tv shows that i watch you see like um the kids driving to like school and stuff i'm like huh it says you can drive at 14 years and six months wow. that's kind of crazy if it's true the oldest driving age in the u.s seems to be new jersey at 17. while wow. in europe the vast vast majority of countries has a 18 years minimum driving age only the uk Iceland, Hungary, and Georgia have lowered it to 17. When it okay. comes to voting, 18 is common all around. Only in Europe are there two countries that differ, Austria at 16 and Greece at 17. Although I'm not sure if these limits are the same for all types of elections. Tobacco purchase is technically only allowed over 21 in all of the US, while in Europe- Why is this like zebra out, this place, right? Is this Switzerland? Bro, my geography is terrible, right? Listen, people like to stereotype and say Americans are dumb, but you guys will be telling me what country this is, and I, I, I'm only here. You guys are way over here. Is this Switzerland? you can buy it at 18. Alcohol purchasing is also forbidden for people under 21 all across the United States, with the limit ages varying a lot across Europe, but none being higher than 18 or 20. Although again, this also varies the- Oh, wait. I, I, I don't think the crosses mean anything. It's just a dark- Okay. I don't think they do. Depending on the type of alcohol, for instance, in Portugal, I think you can buy beer or wine as long as you're over 18. Right. But other drinks do have a 20 year age limit, I think. When it comes to comparison between military, for instance, it's a difficult comparison to make. Okay. According to Wikipedia, the US Army has a personnel of around 1 million, counting active <sighs> troops, reserves, and National Guard. And according to this 2018 article from Business Insider, the top five strongest militaries in Europe, all of these maps exclude Russia, are France with 390,000. Wow. UK, 280 italy 267 germany 200 and spain 175 yo that is actually mad the top five european countries for military combined don't even amount but it do it but like it's close you know what i mean 1 million or 1.3 million close to america bro 
Together, these alone would surpass the U.S. Army. Although you'd still need to take just? into account the material advantage of the U.S. Right. Ships, intelligence, tanks, planes, investment. And in these, the U.S. has a considerable advantage. As we can see from this graph, depicting the investment comparisons. But thankfully, most of Europe and the U.S. are allied through NATO. So depicting the investment. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, people ask, how are United States the world leaders? You know what I'm saying? The most powerful. Bro, we have China and India helping us. Like, combine, bro. This isn't just a Europe graph. United States spent more defense than the next nine countries combined. Wow, China, India, United Kingdom, Russia, France, Germany, Saudi Arabia, Japan, South Korea. And it's not, it don't even amount past America, dude. Wow. Investment comparisons. But thankfully, most of Europe and the US are allied through NATO. So a comparison isn't needed because in the event of Thanks, conflict, guys. it is very likely they would be on the same side. And yeah, yo, yo, um, yo, America, don't uh, betray us, please. Like, like, let's stay united. Let's stay united. Hey, you, you guys like me, right? I like you guys. Let's stay united, man. <laughs> about an economic comparison. The United States and the European Union are the two largest economies globally in nominal terms. In recent years, only in 2011 did the European Union have a higher GDP than the US. Keep in mind, this excludes non-EU Europe. Okay. The US's GDP per capita is 63,000, while in the EU, it's 33. Wow. But keep in mind, both of these are on average. There are EU countries and US states with higher and lower values. Also, as we can see from these maps, the US's GDP is mostly carried by California, Texas, Florida, and New York, while Europe's is mostly carried by France, Germany. Yo, you know when you go to like GDP, I swear like if you take California alone, it will still be top five of like the whole entire world or something New York, like that. Top while ten. Europe's is mostly carried by France, Germany, the UK, Spain, and Italy. When it comes to currency comparison, as I make this video, one euro equals one point zero seven dollars. Right. The euro's value has been higher, and recently its value has decreased a little, approaching parity with the dollar. As as we can see from this graph, there was only a short period in the early 2000s when okay. the euro was worth less than the dollar. And there was a point where it was almost worth 50% more. Recently, things have oh, stabilized wow. and they're almost worth the same. But with Croatia joining the European currency next year, it might go up again. Also, keep in mind, not all of Europe and not even all of the EU use the euro as their currency. Another yeah, as in the UK, we don't use euros. Interesting point to compare is the percentage of young people aged 18 to 34 that still live in their family's home. Meaning in most cases, they do not yet have the financial stability to live on their own. Both of these maps have data from 2015, but from the most recent information I could find about this, the numbers haven't changed a lot. Okay. In Europe, Nordic countries have very low values. They're also the highest income areas, so it makes sense people can more easily afford to live on their own. Right. But it might also have to do with the cultural element. In Southern Europe, the amount of young people still living at home is tremendous. 44 Wait, yeah, this is cr Wait, is this right? <laughs> Yo, people are saying that their parents home in America, but that makes, you know what, that actually makes sense though, because American homes are massive compared to European homes. You got more room to stay in your parents' house. 4% in Portugal, 37 in Spain, and 46 in Italy, for instance, while Greece, Bulgaria, and Slovakia are all above 50%. Oh, and wow. The US values are equally as high, with the difference being that there are no states at all below 10%. The lowest value is okay. 14 in North Dakota, and the highest being in New Jersey with 46, although none surpass 50%. Oh, okay, okay. It's quite different then. Some European countries just go crazy past um, America, but on average, like, I'm kind of just compare, comparing, like, the UK here, because I live in the UK, so 40%. And then on average here, it's around like 20, 25. These high values uh, are usually connected with the fact that salaries do not pay enough and the cost of living is way too high, both due to rising prices, inflation, and also other factors. Yo, you, no, no, no. In that sense, UK should be much higher then. In that case, because the cost of living in the UK is going really high and the salaries is a lot less than america's so that is how the united states and europe compare in a number of indicators and interesting aspects there's a lot of things you could compare the two in if you know of any more leave a comment right and i can always make a part two of this it's yo that was a really good video though really really interesting i can't wait to see your guys comments on this video and see what you guys have to say about this did anything shock you at all very 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 interesting video enjoyed that one hopefully you guys enjoyed as well if you didn't make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe for more content I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.